Welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's Mass Channel. I'm now answering question number two from the November 2015 Mechanics M well, M1. It's paper four, variant three from the Cambridge 9709 series. And here we have a question about um, statics. We have a ring of mass 0 0.2 kilograms, which is threaded on a fixed rough horizontal rod. Okay, so we know there's going to be some friction. Okay, um, and a light and extensible string is attached to the ring at an angle of alpha above the horizontal where the cosine of alpha is equal to 0 0.96. Now, I would like to express that actually in terms of um, a fraction, 96 over 100. That's 24 over 25. That makes life easier for me later on, as you'll see in a minute. The ring is in limiting equilibrium. Okay, a very important phrase. That means it's about to move. That means the friction here has reached its maximum value. With the tension in the string T newtons as seen in the diagram, given that the coefficient of friction between the ring and the rod is 0 0.25, find the value of T. Okay, so now let's take this and draw some of the forces that are on it. Okay, just to get it um, everything clear. So I'm just going to put this diagram out here so we can see a bit clearer. So it's got a mass of 0 0.2 kilograms. So for sure, that has to act vertically downwards. It's weight, which is going to be 0 0.2 G. And we're going to take G as 10, so that'll be two, 2 newtons downwards. Okay, then we have the reaction force, which at the moment, I'm not going to mark it in. All right, the reaction force could either be acting upwards, okay, or it could be, it could be acting downwards. Which way? We're not sure right now. Okay, but we're going to find out in a minute. All right, then we have the component of the tension acting in the direction uh, parallel to the plane or parallel to the um, to the rod and also perpendicular to the rod. Okay, so the, the component parallel to the rod is going to be T times, you're going into the angle, so cosine alpha, and power... Uh, uh, perpendicular to the rod is going to be a vertical component of this, which is going to be away from the angle, T times sine alpha. You can think of it as this is the adjacent side of this little triangle here, and this, this is like the opposite side. And of course, you're going to have friction acting, which is going to act in a direction which is opposing the motion that will take place. If there was no friction, then of course the ring would move this way. So you have friction and it's reached its maximum possible value because it's in limiting equilibrium and we know the maximum possible value of friction in a situation is equal to mu times r and we know mu, mu is 0 0.25 so that's 0 0.25 times r that's f max okay so those are the forces acting on this including the reaction force which either acts up or down we're going to we're going to try to figure out which way and it acts in a minute to make sure all right so what, what i'm going to do here is i'm going to resolve the forces acting horizontally and vertically. So horizontally, we have T times cosine alpha equals F max. And we know F max is mu R. So we have T. Well, let me just um, let me just also work out something else. Now we know cosine alpha is 24 over 25, um, which is as I told us 0 0.96. So I'll write 0 0.96 T equals 0 0.25 R. Okay, so what I can say is T is going to be 0 0.25 over 0 0.96 0 0.25 divided by 0 0.96 that gives you 25 over 96 okay what about 0 0.96 divided by 0 0.25 to the other way around for something else okay so I'll, what i'll do first is i'll write r in terms of t so r is 3.5 t i'm going to do it that way better that's better as you'll see in a minute so i'll find what r is so i can say r is going to be 0 0.96 over 0 0.25 times t so therefore we can say r is equal to 3.84 times t that's what we just did there so i just divided both sides by 0 0.96 r equals 3.84 t so i know the value of r okay whether it's positive or negative we're going to work out in a minute right now we're going to resolve the forces vertically and this is where we'll be able to tell what's happening so we got upwards we got t times the sine of alpha and we also got um, 0 0.2 g acting in the other direction so 0, 0 0.2 g 2 g is going to be 2 newtons 
Okay, now I'm going to first find out what sine alpha is. We know that cosine alpha is 24 over 5, 24 over 25. So if that's alpha, cosine of alpha is adjacent over hypotenuse. And the opposite side is going to be 25 squared minus 24 squared, okay, which will give us 25 squared minus 24 squared, which gives us 49. So square root of 49 is 7, so that's going to be 7 here. So therefore, that we can say the sine of alpha is going to be 7 over 25, okay? So 7 over 25, let's write that as a decimal. That gives us 0 0.28. So we can say sine of alpha is 0. 28 okay so we can use that so i can say that 0 0.28 t and on this side we're going to have two newtons now i know that r is equal to 3.84 t and i know that the the value of t has to be positive the value of t has to be positive i've taken right as positive these have to balance out right so if i put the 3.84 on this side i'm going to end up with a negative value of t Okay, I'm going to end up with a negative value of T. If I put the 3.84 on this side, if the reaction is acting in the same way as the weight, which would be, which would be down, okay, then I'd put 3.84 on this side, and then I'll get a negative value for T. All right? So therefore, I must put the R on this side so that it balances out. So this is going to be 3.84 T. I know now I'm going to have a positive value of T, which makes sense. Okay? So then that was, that's going to give me... 0 0.28 plus 3.84 okay that's going to give me 103 over 25 4.12 t equals 2 newtons so t equals 2 divided by 4.12 so t is equal to 2 divided by my answer which gives you 50 over 103 which is um, 0 0.4543 0 0.4853 4, goes on so therefore we can say the tension to 3sf is 0 0.485 newtons Okay, now if I had put the 3.84 on this side, just imagine I had done that. Okay, I'd got to 0 0.28 T and then I'd put 2 newtons. Supposing I said, all right, let's just put it on this side. Then I'd have plus 3.84 T on this side. Okay, that that means the, 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 the uh, reaction force was there for acting downwards. Okay, if the reaction force that was acting downwards, it would be on the same side as the weight. But then I would end up with something like this. I would end up with, um, you know, minus so i'll have to subtract so i'll have 0 0.28 minus minus 3.84 that will give me minus 3.56 t equals 2 so t will therefore be a negative value okay t2 divided by minus 3.56 okay so you'd end up with a negative value 2 divided by answer which will give you something which doesn't make sense Okay, that will give you something that's wrong. Okay, T can't be negative because we've taken uh, we've taken right as positive. If T is negative, it means it's acting that way, which doesn't make sense at all, acting in the same direction as the friction. Okay, so we have to, at this stage, what I did is I found out what the, um, you know, the, what the component of the T was horizontally, and I worked out on which side I have to put this so that it stays positive. Okay, and then... You know, in this case, we had to put it on this side, okay, for us to make sure that it's positive, right? If I put it on that side like we did there, our answer comes out something that doesn't make sense, okay? So once you found what um, R is in terms of T, and you know what the, uh, what the you know, the component of T is in terms of T, again, on, you know, horizontally, so you can try to put the, the R on the side such, such that you'll end up with a positive value for T. Okay, your T will end up as a positive answer. Okay, so that's how you can figure out where to put this. Okay, and um, I hope that was clear. All right, some people are confused. How do I draw the R? I didn't draw in the beginning. I worked out at the end. It must be on the side of the um, tension up there. Okay, for it to balance out. If you put it down there, then it messes up the whole equation. You end up with a negative value for T, so it messes it up. So once you got to this stage, I didn't put the R there until the end. I said that I, end, I ended up first with, I didn't put this there at the end. I, I had this, and I thought, okay, if I put my R value on this side, okay, plus R on this side, I'll end up with a negative value for T. So then once I got to this stage, I said, all right, I must put this on this side. So such that it's going to be, the T will give us a positive value. 
Okay, so that's how we dealt with that question. And then it's a bit um, confusing at first. You're not sure where to put the R. But in the end, we know where to put the R by looking at once we've, um, you know, resolved the forces. So that's hopefully helped some of the students who are asking about this question. Thank you for watching. Um, other questions from this particular paper can be found in the playlist, which will appear in this area of the screen at the end of the video. Other questions from the topic of statics from uh, Cambridge Mechanics. And uh, in fact, I'm going to have a statics playlist here and one just dealing with rings over there. Uh, you can subscribe to my channel by clicking on this link. Thank you for watching and see you soon.